All right, Colts fans, we are back with another film session interview uh, here today with Zach Pascal, a uh, Colts wide receiver who, you know, I feel like if we had to pick one breakout player from last season, I think uh, it would definitely be you, you know, that you, you went from, you know, having this uh, pretty solid campaign in 2018, your first time really playing a uh, full-time receiver in the NFL. And then, you know, last year you exploded for, I believe you led the team in receiving yards. Um, I think you were second in catches or third in catches and also, uh, tied for the team lead and receiving touchdowns as well. So, you know, coming from where you did, you know, as an undrafted free agent, jumped around a couple teams uh, to where you were last year as the leading receiver on a team. I mean, how did that kind of feel for you to have that big season? Um, it felt good. It gave me a lot of confidence. Um, I remember, like, in every level in every level of football that I played, I've had a, a season where I just gained so much confidence and it took off from there. So, um that was that was good for me to feel, but I mean, it just shows you know just continuing to grind, and just continuing to work at your craft, and continuing to get better no matter what level you at or what day it is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, you you came from being an undrafted free agent. I believe you were there uh, with the Redskins uh, initially out of college, and then uh, spend a little bit with the Titans, and then you've been with the Colts here these last couple of years. Uh, but I want to ask you, you know, because you're kind of like a, I guess I want to say like a success story of undrafted free agent. You know, there's very little guys. Uh, who are in your shoes who make it as far as you have. Um, but you're at the point now where you're, you know, you're a roster regular uh, for this Colts team. What do you have to kind of, what kind of mindset do you kind of have to have though, to be an undrafted free agent who kind of sticks in this league like you have uh, so far in your career? You got to, you got to continue to work no matter the odds that that are against you. You got to con continue to work. It's all about your mindset and your confidence. If you come into a camp knowing, okay, there's six guys in front of you, you know, your last on the depth chart, well, what can I do to show that I can, you know, move up a spot? Um, stuff in the league is not handed. And, I mean, going through this, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I went through this whole process because it just kept me, like, continuing to have to get better because every year there's guys coming in, you know, that's trying to take your spot or well, guys coming in that, you know, it's more competition. So it's like every day that you are not working, somebody else is. And I just – and you uh, to me, I feel like you just have to fall in love with the ground. Like, you have to fall in love with it. If you don't love the game of football and love getting better, I guess it, it, then this game is probably not for you. But um, that's, that's, that's kind of what I, you know, got from all of the things that I went through is just continue to grind, don't stop. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think the biggest thing that, you know, I, I've seen these last couple of years, and I know a lot of fans, coaches, uh, everyone has kind of seen, is uh, the one thing that really stands out about you before, especially before this breakout season, was, you know, you were always kind of the guy who would do the little things, you know, it was special teams, it was run blocking, um, you know, it was all those little things that, you know, maybe don't show up in the stat sheet or, or you know, the fantasy guys or whatever like that, but you were doing all those little things to kind of make yourself something that, you know, a player that these coaches want on the team. Uh, was that a big emphasis for you when you kind of stepped in as an undrafted free agent, uh, you know, to, to be good at those little things, to run blocking the special teams and make coaches, make it kind of like a hard decision for them to cut you if they wanted to cut you? Most definitely. I came in, I remember uh, going, getting a call from the Redskins when I first came out. And um, my mindset just coming into the league was um, whatever you do, put something on film, you know, that's going to make you, that's going to make you pop out, you know, whether it's run blocking or shoot, even clearing out, you know what I'm saying? Show your speed, run as fast as you can, special team, go go down, make a tackle, you know, uh, kick return, punt return. Show them you can do as many things as you can. So, it, yes, like you said, so it's hard for them to cut you. And that's, that's, that's kind of that, that kind of my mindset coming in. Yeah, and then, you know, with all that, you can still build your game and get to the point where you were last year. And, you know, with, with a lot of these clips here, we're going to talk about kind of your receiving game. But that's kind of, this is a kind of a good segue here in this first clip. And honestly, I, I didn't really – like, I watched so much film last year, and I feel like I've seen this play. But I didn't have this play cut up here until I watched uh, – you're, you're mic'd up on – on uh, YouTube, uh, you are run your mouth the whole game with this corner, uh, young guy. And I think it was Nick Needham is, is who it is. You run your mouth in the whole game. And there was a play that I wanted to highlight from, from that kind of mic'd up that I saw here. So you're at the bottom of the screen and you get the, the pancake block on him here at the bottom. If I can, there we go. And you just drive him into the ground <laughs> there. And I think that just, again, it goes with, with that run blocking. I mean, as, was that something that you were big on in college or was that something, you know, when you got to the NFL, undrafted free agent you're like I need to just get my my hat on a guy and drive him to the ground every play 
Well, I would honestly say like high school. My high school, we didn't really throw the ball a lot. We was more of a run team. So I was run blocking since since high school, pancaking yeah. guys. Um, it got more emphasized in college, though. I did have a a, a wide receiver coach, Coach Burton. He he did used to emphasize the run blocking. So that just took my level to, you know, ten times better than that. And that's just instilled in me now. Like I don't you know, like that's 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 just what I want to do at this point. Yeah. My favorite part from that, that from that mic'd up session though is I think you said to him at one point, you know, you kept hitting him on plays where you know the ball the ball wasn't even going his way, wasn't going your guys' way. You were still hitting him and you told him you gotta play every play and you gotta get on him every single play. Is that just kind of the yeah. mindset you have every single Yeah, play? most definitely. Most definitely. Like from 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 where I come from, like every every play matters. Every play. And it's gonna come that one play where he he might just get upset and do something crazy and, and mess up the whole game. I'm just playing football every play. Is that a big part of your game, though, kind of talking to corners all game and trying to get in their head and kind of winning? Uh, no, nah, 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 not really. I don't, I don't really talk too much. I don't really talk too much. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to, to Marcus Johnson um, the, other the other day. I was talking to him on here. And, and he said, he said I yeah, I talked to him and I talked to, I talked to Ashton Doolin, too, and he's not much of a – he's not the biggest talker either, but um, – yeah, it seems like none of you guys are the big talkers. Who, who's the big talker in your guys' receiver room uh, who talks to defensive backs and tries to get on them? And do any of you guys talk? Well, 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 well. If you if you say that, if you say who's the biggest talker in our room, then I, I can honestly say me or Ty. <laughs> Ty talks too, though. Ty Ty yeah. get his talk in. <laughs> I would say me. I would say me. I just. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Because I, I was talking, I, I keep trying to get someone to tell me that they're talkers because I love that aspect of it. So I'm glad I got yeah. someone. Yeah. I have to talk. I have to talk. Um, and, you know, speaking, I was, uh, you know, I just brought up Ashton Doolin there, but I talked to him uh, not too long ago um, doing the same type of interview here. And, you know, he's a guy who's kind of starting out the way that you did uh, when you first came to the league. You know, just a guy mm -hmm. who's a big time, you know, has all the, all the traits to be a really good receiver, um, but he's a big time special teams guy uh, as of right now. Uh, but he told me that it really helped seeing a guy like you in the locker room, uh, seeing how you have grown to the player that you are on the team. Um, do you kind of see a little bit of yourself in him, and are you kind of taking him a little bit under your wing? Oh, yeah. Mo oh, yeah, most definitely. I love that. Ash. Um, I remember uh, when I was on uh, practice squad and uh, for the Titans, and I had this this guy I used to look up to, Rashad Matthews, and he, yeah. he would just talk to me every day, you know, and just teach me the game. And, Ashton as an undrafted free agent, I, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm connected with him in, a, you know, in a way that's just like I, I see the, I see the, I see the, um, the growth in him. He done got from 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 day one to now. I didn't see the growth, and that's just him grinding, and him grinding, and him grinding. Whatever he's doing in the off season and in every practice, you know, I always try to, you know, t teach him stuff on the side. Like, yo, if you try this, and you know, this will get better. And he's really getting better as a receiver. And I, I can't wait to see where he goes from here on out. Yeah, no, I'm definitely excited to see what, what he becomes. He's, he's a great kid. Um, you know, just talking to him, texting with him, he's, he's awesome. And I, I hope he definitely has – you know, if he has the growth and success that you had um, with the Colts here, then, then uh, you know, that's, that's just a great career that he's turned out. But, um, you know, jumping to this next clip here, you know, kind of building off of kind of uh, what we were talking about, you know, that run blocking aspect. And, um, you know, it's kind of funny. To start this last season, you know, it was that big season for you. But those first two games, you didn't really play much. On, on the offense side of the ball. You know, there's a lot of special teams. Uh, but once the injuries came in with, with Funches and, and T.Y., uh, you really got your chance to shine. And, and it was kind of that Falcons game that really propelled you to kind of that bigger role later in the season. And I love this play here because it kind of takes that element of your run blocking ability and it turns into a big catch here. So you're faking the run block inside. You break out downfield for the big catch. Uh, right. which sets up the go-ahead touchdown, I believe, is what it was to, to win the game. Uh, was this a play that you guys practiced, you know, throughout the week, or was this something that throughout the game you guys saw they were stacking the box and you wanted to just kind of throw this little wrinkle in there at them? No, nah, we had that in since camp. So that was a play. We, yeah, that was a play we've been, we've been working on. Um, yeah, we, that was a play we've been working on since camp. So it was, it was executed real well. Then. Yeah that strong safety coming down real hard, playing a run, and then beat them over the top. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, it was a big play for you guys. And, uh, again, I think it was the one that kind of sealed the, the game here because you guys got them down low, got them in the red zone there, and then able to score uh, to put the game away. Um, but, you know, going into this game, you know, it was your kind of your first big game of this season here. And 
uh, you know, you had a good season in 2018. And with ODU, you know, you were a big time receiver. You had, I think you were the all time leading receiver there at ODU. Um, so, you know, going from that kind of success, going from a big season the year before, not really playing those first two games, you know, it's kind of been inconsistent, you know, for you getting your kind of targets and getting your kind of big games. Is that kind of like, I guess, does that affect your mindset whatsoever as a receiver, you know, not getting the ball some games, getting the ball a lot some games? Like, how does your mindset kind of work with, with that, you know, not getting the ball every single game? Don't get me wrong. It definitely uh, affects your mindset, but that's, that's when, uh, that's when you got to be mentally strong. You know what I'm saying? That's when you personally on yourself got to be mentally strong and not let, you know, things like that, you know, alter your mindset and continuing to grind and continuing to just believe in, you know, my time is going to come or uh, maybe this is not the game or, you know, just continue to work and get better on yourself so that when the time does come, you know, you make something happen up. Um, it'll come, and I'm a, I'm a firm believer of that. It'll come. You just got to make something happen when it comes. Awesome, awesome. And, you know, I, I, I told you I've talked to Ash, and I've talked to uh, Marcus as well, and, you know, those guys are, are big parts of this as well. But I've asked them, you know, with the Colts, I've heard a lot of how big practice is for you guys, you know, when it comes to installing plays, when it comes to uh, who plays on Sundays, what kind of plays are going to be run. Um, but, you know, from your experience with the Colts, how big is that practice element when it comes to your guys' game days? Oh yeah, practice is big. I would say practice is practice is big. I mean, if we don't, if we run a play, and we run a play in practice, and it doesn't look good, we're not gonna run it in the in the game. If a play is supposed to come to you and it don't look good, we're not gonna call it. So every time we're out there, we're competing against the defense, and still got to make sure you know we're we're perfect in our landmarks and you know detailed uh on the uh, scheme and. If it doesn't look good, we ain't running this. So, I mean, that atmosphere at practice is, is, is real intense. So, everybody be trying to compete, and, and that just leads over to the game where now, you know, we're doing things, we're, be, we're being where we're supposed to be, and it just helps. Yeah. So, for not to look good in practice, I mean, does it have to be like the process looks rough? Like, what if, what if it's just like one player, like, you know, say the quarterback overthrows a throw or something like that, but everything else looks good. Will that play still be in the playbook or, or for the playbook on Sunday or kind of – how does that kind of go about? Uh, I mean, it depends on what the offensive coordinator and head coach and, you know, everybody up top like. So, I mean, I don't know what goes through their head about the play or, you know, what what you know what determines what's in and what's not. I'm just in doing my job. Gotcha. So do you guys have any, like, input on those at all? Like what plays you guys like throughout the practices or whatever that you guys see? I'm sorry, say it one more time. So do you guys have any, like, input on plays that you guys like, or is that all kind of up top with, with Coach Reich and, and Sirianni and all them? I don't. <laughs> I don't. So I, I don't know. I don't know who got the input on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. I was just wondering, you know, I, I'm sure it's all Coach Reich and, and them kind of they, – they're assessing everything. But I was just curious if you guys were able to kind of get your input there. But um, getting this next clip here, you know, we're getting to uh, more – kind of your route running and stuff like that. And this is kind of interesting because I believe when you were in Redskins camp, I think it was 2016 or 2017, I believe. One of those, mm. um, I think 2017. I was actually covering the Redskins back then. So I had act, I was actually at that camp. Um, I, I was able to see you kind of in person there. And personally for me, as someone who's kind of watched your game these last couple of seasons, you know, I, I've really seen that kind of growth for you in this area in your route running. And this is a, a play that you had here against the Titans here at the bottom of the screen. Um, it's a deep in route. And you're able to beat him off the line, break inside, uh, really good feet, and you're able to get that big catch for the first down here. Um, but I think, you know, from, from your day one in the NFL to, to where you are now, I mean, I think you're, you've become a really good route runner here in the NFL. Has that been something that you've really worked on since you got to the league, you know, getting route running, getting your landmarks, and, and kind of, uh, you know, getting quicker feet in and out your breaks and stuff like that? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, and I learned coming into the league, you got to try and get as much separation as you can. Um, and that, that comes with route running. So I, I watch guys like uh, Keenan Allen and uh, Antonio Brown and Julio Jones and how they run their routes off steps and stuff like that and just try to incorporate it into my game. I go to a lot of different coaches like uh, Receiver Factory and uh, Coach Coleman and, and, and Myron Flowers and try to get my route running uh, improved every year. I mean, that's that's – I feel like route running is like art. That's like a receiver's art his picture like like that he's drawing so um yeah so every year I just try to get better at that yeah what, what would you say is the most important part of the route for a receiver you know would you say it's the release the the break point uh what where do you really think is the most important part to win your route 
um, as a receiver in the NFL? Uh, the top of the route. And when I say the top of the route, I mean from when I'm going straight into whatever direction I'm going. So right there at the 25-yard uh, line, mm -hmm. top of the route. I feel as though no matter what type of speed you have, you could be slow, you could be fast. Um, as long as the top of your route is, you know, crisp and clean, you can, you know, break any way and, uh, and be smooth for the catch. Yeah. Because the deep, I mean, the DB is reacting off you. So if you're smooth through that transition, then, you know, you should be good. Yeah. Was that something you kind of had to adjust to here in the NFL too when it comes to your route running? Because, you know, when, when you're in college, it's a lot easier to run by guys and, and win deep and, and win with just pure athleticism. Um, but, you know, you have to be so much more of a technician here in the NFL because everyone's fast, you know, was, was that kind of a, something that at first kind of took you by surprise how everyone was kind of like, you know, that same speed and you had to be so much more technical and refined with your route running? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It did for a little while. And then, you know, as you compete against these guys and compete and want to win, then you just start automatically trying to, you know, do things to to help you uh win the rep. So yeah, I would say that as well. Awesome. And then we're gonna get to this clip here against the Bucks. And I have one more thing I want to talk to you about. Um but yeah this this play against the Bucks here, let me move this thing out of the way. Um was your touchdown against the Buccaneers. I think it was a C route, I believe. I think it was a C route here on the top. Or I don't know what it's called by everyone else. That's what I've always called it. It's a C route. Um let me move this down. There we go. So here we go. We got the top of the route. Um, and I, I really like this play. I mean, it's just a really good um, play, just kind of staying consistent um, in your route there. And the corner kind of jumps up and um, misplays the ball. But um, what, what I always liked about your season last year is I think I went through all your plays and I, I charted almost every single ball that was thrown your way. And I know Pro Football Focus and all those other sites have done it too. But you know, at most I could take maybe one one drop at most. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of judging it being kind of strict. Um, so you've been, you've been a really consistent pass catcher, great hands, uh, and really reliable guy um, catching away from your body. Um, and I, that was something you had in college as well. You know, you're you're really good with that in college. Um, how big is that for someone like you and just any receiver in general to be that reliable target down the field for a quarterback? I mean, honestly, honestly, to me, I mean. I don't even I, I will always tell guys like I don't even think I have the best hands. Even in college, I don't I don't think I had the best hands. I I just work like when I say I, I I go out and I practice these reps, I get these reps continuously over and over and over, different angles, you know, mm -hmm. different um ways of trying to, you know, hand out coordination. That that that's what helps me in the game. I don't like guys will tell you they'll see me drop so many, so many like you know different catches and then turn around and make and make other type of catches. Um, but it's just I feel like it's just continuing to work, um, continuing to get better at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know plays like this, you know you stumble out your break here at the top. Let me slow that down a little bit. But um, you stumble out your break at the top, and um, I guess the time is kind of thrown off if that happens. You know if you kind of stumble or something like that, um, but you're able to stay you know, stay true to your route here and catch the ball. Um, you know, I know timing is important in the NFL, but how important is it still to stay true to your route regardless of timing and still just kind of keep your head to the ball and, and kind of expect that ball regardless? You know, that ball could always come your way. Well, when you got, when you got seven back there, you know, you, you continue your route because he's going to get it there. He's going to put it right in the bucket just like on he did on this play with two guys right there. Um, mm -hmm. If I was to slow down and think, you know, Oh, like he's not gonna put it there, or I'm double covers. Then, you know, this this play would have been dead. I think this is third down too. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is big. Just you know, having him having faith in me and me having faith in him. Yeah, you guys had a really good chemistry last year. I mean, you had your first, you had your two uh, first hundred, like your first two hundred yard games last year. You had a couple other really big games with with Jacoby back there. Um, was that something that you guys kind of developed before last season or kind of as the season went on, you guys were really developing that chemistry and that trust with each other? Uh, I remember my first year, you know, with Andrew Luck, you know, I, was, I wasn't I was a starter then, so I was always um, doing, like, practice squad reps and doing reps with the twos, and me and Jacoby would be um, throwing and catching. And so, I mean, ever since, I mean, ever since then, I've always, I've, I've always been getting reps with him always, and our connection's been real good since then. So it was just like a uh, dream come true. And now, you know, that particular year, we was both starters at the time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then getting to this last game here. And, and those, we're going to kind of go – we're just going to kind of go quickly through 
uh, these clips here in this last game because I, I've been telling people the last couple of days because I was watching through some of your, your film, and I think this was probably the best game I saw from a Colts receiver last year. And it wasn't even one of your 100-yard games. It was your, your game against Pittsburgh. Uh, I just feel like you made – so many big plays in this game. And uh, I just want to kind of go through a couple of them with you here. And this first one, you're at the top of the screen here. I think this is against Joe Hayden. Um, and it's on a deep out route. And what PG I really legend. like – What's Joe up? Hayden, PG, Joe Hayden's a PG legend, and I'm from PG as well. So, respect to Joe Hayden. <laughs> How did it feel going against him in this one? Felt pretty good? It was amazing. It was amazing. I told him uh, that game, you know, hey, man, I, I looked up to you. He was a PG legend and all that. I just wanted to shout out to him. Oh yeah, that's awesome, man. And and you were you were you were able to beat him here for a nice catch. And um, I really like this play here because you're able to kind of attack his blind spot, which I really like. You know, he opens up to the inside, and you're able to kind of press inside before attacking that, you know, right there with that really good step, and then getting outside. And you had to kind of leave him in the dust there. Um, but what's what's kind of key for a receiver when attacking that blind spot? I mean, what really is attacking the blind spot for people that kind of don't know? So the blind spot is you know whichever way the corner is facing his backside. So if he has eyes, you know, if, if he's facing the inside, you know, you want to get to that backside like at the last, like, two steps, if you can see that. That way, you know, he because he, his eyes is facing the quarterback. So when he loses sight of you, he doesn't know where you are at that point, and then you break. You know, it creates the separation. Yeah, and that was just a great play there to get that big uh, big catch. And, um, again, I'm sure it felt great to, uh, you know, leave a PG legend there kind of running away from you wide open on the sideline. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, Joe Hayden's great, man. He's been yeah. damn good for so long. <laughs> well, definitely. But getting to this next one here is your touchdown from uh, Brian Horry. He throws you a really nice ball here. But um, you have the skinny post here uh, in the red zone uh, from the 15-yard line. And, again, I really like the, your hands away from, the, from your body here, making a really nice catch. Um, that, that's just a really good catch point right there, getting up on that one. <laughs> um, I mean, did you think this ball was ever going to be out of reach here or that was kind of a routine catch for you over the middle? Um, no, nah, well, I mean, I could have ran through it. I didn't have to jump. I could have just continued to run under it and stick my hands up. But, I mean, I, it, was a, it was a great ball and a great placement. Those type of routes we like to throw high in the back of the uh, red zone. So, it was, mm -hmm. it was good and great ball placement by Hoyer and right before the safety got there too. So, uh, he put it in a great spot for me to make a play on it and – um, it was good. Awesome. And then yeah. this next one, I believe, was the – let's see which one this one. I think this was the toe, jab, the toe tap here on the sideline. Yeah, on the bottom of the screen here. Yeah, and that's just a really nice toe tap there on the bottom. Let me get this. Um, yeah, I mean, that's crazy. Is that something you work on, kind of the, that toe tap uh, on the sideline you guys work on quite a bit? Yeah, we do that every week. Um, and after every practice, I do like sideline drills with uh, Naeem Hines and uh, Parks Frazier. We we do we, we throw every, after every practice. We do some sideline stuff and um, different angles all the time. So um, that just goes with the work. And uh, I had I had another uh, coach there, uh, Gunn, who used to help me with you know just hands and uh, hand out coordination on the sidelines and things like that. So shouts out to all those all those guys as well. Awesome. And then this last clip here, I believe is your acrobatic catch that you make on the sidelines. Um, this is just a really impressive catch. I mean, back shoulder on the streak there, and you're able to dive back for it. Let me slow that down just a little bit. Um, again, there's another really good ball with Brian Hoyer. He, he kind of stepped in and played really well in that game. Uh, gave, you guys a, gave you guys a real good chance to win that one. Um, mm -hmm. But this is good. I, I always, I'm always curious when it comes to, to streak routes with receivers and quarterbacks, like how that chemistry comes for a background or for a back shoulder throw, you know, is, is that something that you're kind of expecting as you get to a certain landmark or um, is it kind of when you shoot your head back uh, to the quarterback, you're kind of just adjusting as that ball's coming? Well, well um, that just comes with film watch. And I think this particular week, they, uh, we knew they like to play uh, top shoulder. And when I say top shoulder, if I'm running forward, they're on my top, uh, top shoulder, the top part, like as you see right there. Mm -hmm. and so we knew the back shoulder was going to be um, – more more likely to throw on most of these goal routes. So that was his game plan that week. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I think this game was just outstanding. Do, do you think this was your best game or do you think it was one of the, the hundred yard games where it was your best game last year? Um, yeah. Yeah. I would say that. I would say this game, um, I would say this game was uh, my best game. Um, but I definitely did like the two touchdown games versus, versus Houston. That was, that was, 
that was uh, one of my, I guess, favorable games. Well, I mean, yeah, you, yeah, you got your first two. I think – was that your first two touchdown game as well and your first 100-yard game all in one? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that was probably a great moment for you. Mm -hmm. um, Most definitely. Yeah. I mean, it was just a great season for you in general last year. And I know that, you know, injuries kind of – create opportunity in the NFL and you're you're someone who absolutely knows that more than most people um so it was outstanding to see you kind of step up the way that you did um just a couple questions here before we kind of close it out though I mean the, the Colts made a couple big additions here uh this offseason and one of them is being you know adding quarterback Philip Rivers uh, a guy who could be a Hall of Famer one day um just with how great his career has been um how excited are you to play with with a guy of you know Philip Rivers uh, caliber here this next season I'm very excited. Uh, you know, Clint, he's a vet in the game, a future Hall of Famer. Um, you know, he's 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 able to you know be that presence in that in that huddle and uh, teach guys the game, even in the um, film film meeting rooms. You know, he'll teach you the game and help you understand what's going on and what he's seeing, so that you know we're all on the same page. And that's just that that presence by him, and um, it's gonna be really exciting playing with him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, he's he's a great one, so it's going to be a really fun year with that. Um, and then another big addition, and, and this is someone I was talking about mostly with Marcus Johnson because he's had experience with him. But, um, you know, they added a new wide receiver coach with, and Mike Rowe, um, a guy who, uh, you know, comes from Philly with Frank Reich um, and who's developed quite a few receivers here now in the NFL. Um, have you talked at all to, to Mike Rowe at all or, or have any uh, communication with him so far? Oh, yeah. I mean, we didn't have a ton of communication, you know, through the Zoom meetings and yeah. through texts and through video. And, yeah, I talk to Coach all the time. That's, 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 that's a great guy right there. Are you excited to work with him? I know uh, I know Marcus was super excited when I was talking with him. He was oh, super... yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, even just seeing, you know, the drills that he uh, was showing us, and it's, it's going to be totally different um, from, you know, what we're used to. So we all know we're here to get better. And, what he has for us is going to get us better, and we're excited. I'm excited. Awesome, man. Awesome. So final question I have for you here, and I want to say uh, thank you for taking the time out today. I know it's a uh, crazy time right now with everything going on, so I really do appreciate you taking the time. Um, but, you know, this team has added a lot of talent uh, this offseason, you know, from Phillip Rivers to Jonathan Taylor and Michael Pittman in the draft to uh, just a lot of guys. And, and I think you know, the, the feel for the fans and, and everyone around this team is, you know, this could be a really good year for you guys. Uh, so I just want to ask you, you know, what, what are your kind of expectations, not only for yourself, but also for kind of this Colts team going forward um, this next season? Uh, so continuing to grind. And, you know, we may not be here first week. I mean, as long as we're continuing to get better and get better as a team and as teammates and as players and continuing to grow in our, uh, in our talent, you know, it's, Sky's the limit for us. So, I mean, we'll just see, you know, come this season. But right now we got Jacksonville on our mind and we're trying to go get that dub. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, hey, I appreciate the time. Um, and uh, it was definitely a pleasure talking with you and, and definitely watching this past season. Again, as someone who's followed you since, uh, honestly, since your Old Dominion days, I'm, I live right out here in Virginia right now. So I've been following oh, yeah? you. Okay. Yeah. I'm up here in, um, in Winchester right now. Okay, so, okay. yeah, that's where. Um, so, yeah, I've been following you since Old Dominion and went to the Redskins camp. So it's been really good to see you kind of climb to success here with the Colts and, and put together Appreciate a really good career. Man. Appreciate that very much, man. All right. You have a good one, bud.